Hey guys, you're watching Tech Radar. My name is Basil, and this video is all about four camera phones the iPhone 8 Plus, the Google Pixel 2 XL, the Samsung Galaxy Note 8, and the new Huawei Mate 10 Pro. We're doing a blind test with Phil Hall, our cameras editor, and Gerald Lynch, our associate editor. Phil knows a lot about photos, Gerald, not so much. You can take part in this camera test along with us. If you visit Tech Radar, you'll see on page one of the corresponding article, which is linked in the description below if you're watching this on YouTube, you'll be able to check out the photos without any indication as to which photo is which device. Then on page two, all will be revealed, or you can wait until the end of this video. I'm Gerald, and I know nothing about cameras, or very little anyway, and I know even less about how to take a good photo. But I do know what I like, so hopefully I'll be able to have a look at some of these photos and decide from my opinion which is the best of the camera phones. So the first round is detail and dynamic range. We've got a shot of a sort of a a building, um, so it's got sort of plenty of uh, light and shadow. I think I see the most detail in either camera four or one. Camera four has a little bit more um, depth to the colour, from to my eye. The first one is a little bit overexposed. So my favourite shot out of the four is the fourth one. It's got the most amount of uh, detail rendered in the leaf. You see that compared to the others. Number one, I think, is the least successful, just because the metering's gone a bit funny there. Camera three isn't too, so bad either, but camera two really lacks any fine detail in the leaves. Second up, we're gonna get up close with some macro shots. Number two is really shoddy. It's like completely like blurred out any kind of real detail. Probably least successful is uh, shot number two. It's either missed focus or it's tried to um, just reduce the depth of field too much. There's just no detail or clarity. Again, I quite like three and four, and I think that four probably has the best balance between um, detail and depth and exposure levels. Detail has been rendered really well on the thumb screw there. Number one is quite overexposed, which means that though there's detail present, it's hard to see the fine detail around what seems to be the rings at the top. Detail isn't great, and just the way it graduates off into the background doesn't look that sort of that nice. Next, getting up close and personal with our video producer Tom, it's portrait. And there's some real variation across each image here. Probably think uh, it's gonna be shot four again here, just because, while it looks a little bit dark, I think it's probably been the most successful of uh, separating our subject here from the background. It's quite a clean transition. In terms of detail, they all look kind of overly smooth and a little bit um, unnatural. In terms of the most true to life, I would say camera four is the best. In terms of the most flattering, maybe camera two. Skin tones, probably shot four is a bit on the cool side. One is the most neutral, but I think it's uh, counteracted by the sort of the crude separation in the shot. Dropping the lights and going indoors for some low light shots, how do the phones stack up? So we've got some fruit against some boxes in a kitchen. All four cameras seem to have struggled here a little bit, which isn't surprising really from a camera phone. But again, it seems to me that camera number four is above the others. It just seems a, a tighter, uh, more crisp image. There's quite a lot of chroma and luminance noise in the shot, so detail suffered. Uh, especially down here. Camera 3 is pretty good at bringing up um, the text that you can see on the boxes. So the text there looks a lot sharper. The contrast with the black and the white has um, made the lettering quite sharp. But again, it kind of loses some of the detail in um, the colors of the fruit itself. Flash. Ah. And then the final test is the same scenario, but with the flash switched on. And all cameras perform a lot better in, in this situation. You know, you don't always want to have a flash on, but when you're in a dark situation, sometimes it's the best solution. Coverage is pretty good for all four images, so decent distribution of light across, across the range. But looking closer at the images, shot one, you can look at the apple and there's sort of detail that's sort of suffered here. Similar story with shot two. Camera three, probably again, looks the best. There's just a lot more detail, a lot crisper text. Shot three here uh, has the edge out of all of them. Good detail in the lettering, while the Apple and Pear have managed to retain a decent amount of detail. And the winner is 
The Google Pixel 2 XL. Almost every single time Phil and Gerald agreed, camera number four, the Pixel 2 XL, was the best camera phone of the bunch. As for the runners up, the Samsung Galaxy Note 8 came in a close second, with the Huawei Mate 10 Pro falling behind it, and just behind that was the iPhone 8 Plus. Here's what they thought. The images of Shot 4 are probably my pick. I'm going to say 4 because I think overall it performed the most consistently across the tests. Number three did quite well in the low light situation, um, so that gave it a slight edge, but for the most part, I think number four seems to be the best. Shot one probably did the worst with the portraits, um, but then looking at the others, well, camera two wasn't that great either, so it's a tie up between those. Camera number two seemed to have kind of consistently quite poor image quality. So that's how these four phones compared in this test. Now these are five very, very different images and the phones can form differently in the real world. If you wanna really learn about the nuances of these camera phones, read the full reviews on techradar.com. Thanks for watching.